Robots, episode 105. Thank you, Joe and John, for the tips this week. It's super glue for the financial monies. It, I'm supposed to thank people. Well, I wanted to do it. Thank you. What does super glue for the financials even mean? It means money keeps things together, like super glue. But, you know, without it, everything falls apart. You know, that actually makes sense. Ugh, all right, fine. Thank you, Joe and John, for the support this week. I, I already thanked them. Thank you. I already did that. Oh, God. Uh, moving on. The new Scream movie comes out on January 14th. So, for folks into the Scream franchise, there you go. It looks to be okay from what I've seen, you know, with the trailer. I'm assuming it won't be terrible. You know, here's hoping, you know, because the horror genre really needs some better films, you know. Also, if you like the Scream series, there is a four LP soundtrack collection floating around. It has this, like, cool ghost face packaging and all that crap. So if you're into it, look it up. Kind of cool. You know, I really like the way that they're actually, like, making an effort to put all these soundtracks on vinyl. You know? It's like some of these were never released on vinyl. Yeah, I mean, honestly, vinyl's a little awkward for me, frankly, as far as the listening experience goes. Um, yes, yeah, sound quality's better, etc. I know. Um... But, you know, dude, I just, I need something quick, right? If something sucks, I want to skip right past it. I don't have to find the groove for the next track. Fair enough. Y you know, I've been thinking, a movie called Scream should technically be about the Washington punk band of the same name that, that was formed in 1981. Really? Dave Grohl was in that band. I actually know that, yes. Oi, speaking of Dave Grohl, oi, oi, new Studio 666 trailer came out. It looks fun, you know, like, like an actual fun horror comedy. Um, yeah, for those who don't know, Dave Grohl and the entire Foo Fighters band are going to be in a horror comedy movie called Studio 666, where they attempt to record a new album in an old haunted house, unleash demons, and it goes on from there, apparently. Instant to watch, my age. Instant. Honestly, I am totally on board for that, you know, because it looks good for my taste, and if we can get even half of a fun Evil Dead-style type movie out of it, I'm fine with that. I'll assume the soundtrack will be amazing. You know, actually, I haven't heard anything about the soundtrack, you know? But there are rumors of a John Carpenter song appearing on it. Oh, instant boy. I love me some John Carpenter. Yeah, I mean, Foo Fighters, the horror genre, and a John Carpenter song. I mean, yeah, that's like a leprechaun's pot of gold of horror comedy music rock and stuff like that, y'all. I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, fingers crossed. It'll be good. Also, Bob Saget died. Like, what? Yeah, yeah, like, how the hell did that happen? I mean, what? Dude, that just came out of left field. It was like, hey, Bob Saget's dead. I, I don't know how it happened. All I know is that it wasn't my fault. No, no one said it was. O okay, I'm just saying. There's been accusations. Because of the last cartoon, which was just supposed to be fun. <laughs> All right, dude, whatever. Okay. Anyway, uh, for those who haven't heard, an animated Scott Pilgrim series is in the works for Netflix with the creator on board, so that could be something to look forward to, hopefully. Well, I mean, if the creator is involved, that's a pretty good sign, right? Yeah, usually, but, you know, <laughs> Lucas. Um, well, at the very least, it'll flesh out the film, you know, as a lot of material was kind of left out of it, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's been a while for me uh, since I've read Scott Pilgrim, so I'll probably revisit the series and kind of refresh my brain on the material. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm just so skeptical about content being revisited after it's been dormant for, like, a decade, you know? It's like, how are they going to modernize this and change up the content for the sensitivity overseers that companies seem to be forced to hire? Sensitivity overseers? What? Yeah, um, a lot of companies are hiring people to go through content and look for anything that may be considered insensitive to anyone during production so they can weed it out and stop controversy before it happens. And um, when did America become so sensitive and, you know, sensory... Because, I mean, you blokes had some of the most crass comedy shows in history. I mean, married with children, all in the family. I mean, the list goes on. How do you go from that to, well, I mean, honestly, I can't even name the current sitcom as they are all so forgettable. You know, I, mean, I don't even know the names of these shows anymore because I don't care. They left no impression. Yeah, dude, I have no idea. And you know what? Not for nothing. Places like Japan have zero cancel culture, okay? So... I have no idea why it's such a thing over here, right? 
Well, I, I think because in Japan, they have a healthy disconnect between reality and fantasy over there, you know? I mean, look at some of the anime and manga, it's all like bouncy ladies and weird situations and such, and, and you know, people don't get uptight about it over there. You know, it comes stateside and it's all like, oh, there was a bosom. It's like, oh, oi, half the population has bosoms. Get over it. Yeah, but I think that's just the normies who, like, all of a sudden discovered anime and are shocked to find out that, much like American cartoons, there are mature series available for adults. God, I hate talking about this. It goes on forever, doesn't it? Well, maybe it boils down to humans having psycho brains that can't tell the difference between cartoons and reality and they should be locked up. And no keys ever given back to them for release. They just sit in the cell and say, oh, oh, the cartoon's in my brain. No! Sure, whatever. Or perhaps it stems from a lack of control. Like, you know, when a human sees something that they don't like, you know, they feel the need to remove it from society. You know, it's not just enough that they just, you know, don't watch it. It's got to not exist. And, you know, they go out of their way to remove a bit of media that may make them feel uncomfortable inside. And, you know, that says more about them than it does about the content. Uh, yeah, I mean, the less detrimental approach to freedom of expression would be, you know, change the channel, close the tab, move on to something else that is more your speed. I've said this numerous times. There's a ton of stuff I would love to just scrub from the internet. But you know what? Who am I to impose my sensibilities of what is creative and what isn't on society? That's not my job. People should be smart enough to make up their own minds. If they're not smart enough to make up their own minds, then why should they be allowed to make up my mind for me by censoring the content I want to watch? And I'm not talking about weird, bad stuff, okay? I'm talking about just comedy. I'm talking about comedy. God, this is tedious. Even the Pope doesn't like cancel culture. Yeah, well, I don't think cancel culture really gives a crap about what the Pope thinks. You know? Yeah, I'm surprised he hasn't been canceled, you know, church and all that. Well, whatever. Moving on. Hopefully, it'll shake itself out at some point, because honestly, I barely delve into anything anymore because none of it seems to move me because it's so bland, etc., etc. Repeat. Moving on. And this is why I will defend why I watch mostly anime, right? I don't have to worry about woke messages in my shows and all that nonsense. It is what it is. Fiction and fun, that is all. Can we, can we move on, okay? All right, all right. Um, okay, out of left field. Whatever happened to Hardware Wars? What? All right, listen, Hardware Wars. It was essentially the first parody of Star Wars from, like, 1978, okay? Some dude, uh, I think his last name was Facilius, uh, did this 15-minute-long parody of the film using, like, weird toasters and stuff like that. Oh, I want that. Yeah, all right, but here's the thing. There was a DVD floating around for their 30th anniversary by Apprehensive Films, but there was supposed to be a new HD scan that was going to be released on Blu-ray, like, seven years ago, and it just never manifested. It just vanished. It doesn't exist. Just like most of his stuff right now. That Facilius guy did like a bunch of weird little things and they were all supposed to be released and just never were. I can't find these things. That is strange. Have you, tr have you tried YouTube? All right, one. As for YouTube, I don't want some low res crusty ass crap, okay? Every time, check YouTube, check YouTube. Yeah, somebody probably stole their work and posted it on YouTube. I want a release that I can purchase or at the very least, a good digital download I can get from the creator so they can make money, okay? Well, I mean, sometimes there's no alternatives. Yeah, whatever. But I, the thing is, I hate when there's a slated release that just disappears into infinity, and then you hear nothing about it. And I understand it's a weird, obscure thing probably nobody's ever seen. I don't even know if it holds up, okay? Because I haven't seen it in so long. The last time I saw it was when the director of that was on Cinema Insomnia with Mr. Lobo. Yeah. And they showed it in there, and during that, that was it. You know, I shall do research for you and find the answers. Oh my god. Dude, staring into a Twinkie for answers isn't research. Stop doing that. You just don't understand how to read the spongy cake goodness and read the cream filling. You know, you can map out the universe with a Twinkie. <sighs> Maybe with the old recipe. Anyway, also, today, January 13th, <laughs> a new album was released called Foamy the Squirrel. Let's get darker. It's a bunch of dark electronic music, so if you like the last album, Let's Get Dark, you might like this one. It's available to patrons, but also on Bandcamp, iTunes, Spotify, itch.io, and most places where you can buy or stream music. So, enjoy. Yes, and speaking of which, when is that Lucretia Dogmore gonna be in the comics? Well, I'm a little antsy, you know? She'll, she'll be partially in the first issue, and then we'll try to flesh out her backstory in the second one. It'll be a slow roll, as someone should be working. Quiet. I'm reading the Twinkie. 
Yeah, well, it better predict a release date for that comic. I'm getting a bit annoyed here. All right, all right, yeah, I've got a question. Huh. Like, what is our angle with that now? I mean, publishing a comic, right? It ain't what it used to be. Back in the day, you know, you'd make a comic and release it, and people would be like, oh, it's a comic, I'm either going to buy it or not. Now, right, most people just release chapters, you know, of their comic, hoping people will support them, and then, later on, release a physical release, you know? So, I mean, how are we going to approach this? Well, I have no idea. Personally, I generally like having a finished product for people rather than have a slow drip of content over months. Though, you know, I know people will release stuff gradually in most instances now. So, I, I guess it's kind of up to people, you know? Yeah, right, um, so I guess comment as to whether you want... I guess chapter releases or not? Oh, I don't know. Oh my, we could do patron-only kind of things and be like, oh, here's, you know, the first couple of pages and here's some more pages. You know, and that kind of thing. Or we can do dribs and drabs, you know, through all the platforms, right? And then just give the comic to patrons when it's done. Every time we release something, we forget about how to make money off of it. Well, that, that's what patrons are for, man. You know, they're supporting. We give them stuff. Yeah, that's why they're getting the album that just came out today. Well, I guess. Oh God, whatever. I'm not going to explain business to you right now. Please don't, I'm concentrating on your Twinkie. Oh, God. Okay, well, I mean, if you're not sure on how to release it, right, what we could do, right, is release a chapter or two, right, and then release it, like, like I used to do with album releases back in the day. You know, the band would put out their first single, right, right, and then they'd have another, and then they would release a full album. You know, slowly get people hyped up for it. You know? Yeah, but dude, nobody releases full albums anymore, okay? It's, if they do, it's by accident. Oh, accidental album. Oh, that should be the follow-up to my album, I Pressed More Buttons and Made More Music. Oh, God, no. Just stop. Can we take a break from making music so we can make art? Okay? Everyone else, thank you for listening and supporting and all that stuff. We've been super busy doing things and trying to get stuff out there, as usual. Boy, that reminds me. We got stickers and prints. Uh, you know, they're all up on Design Bar Humans, and including some quirky pinups of Jermaine and Lucretia and that Pauline person. Yeah, there's that, too. Don't get too excited about the pinups, okay? They're all weird and quirky. I like drawing weird and quirky. <laughs> well, whatever. Um, I think that's enough advertising for us. Um, oh, but speaking of ads, oh my god. Yo, why is there a Geico Portal commercial? Okay, why? You mean Portal the game? Yeah, okay, here's the thing. I was watching Twitch, you know, which was Games Done Quick, because we're doing that all this week, and there was a Portal Geico commercial, which was just so awkward and pandery, I felt like I wanted to puke, okay? Oh, you want puke-inducing pandering? You go watch that Old Spice commercial with The Witcher. That'll kill a franchise instantly. Oh, my God. Wow. Well, well, thanks, Witcher, for being good when you were before you sold out to deodorant. My God. Yeah, you know what? I don't care how much Old Spice you pile on. The pandering business practices like that still reek. But then again, no deodorant can ever hide the smell of corporate BS. So... Enjoy your franchises while you can before Kingdom Hearts starts trying to sell you mood elevators and Cooking Mama tries to push antacids on you. Oh, no, no, wait for political season to roll around in the States. You know, you're going to have Tiny Tina from Borderlands trying to tell you which politician to support. It's all going to turn to rubbish. Uh, honestly, I think I would vote for whoever Claptrap told me to. I'm just being honest. Oh, God. <laughs> um, yeah, gamers, keep all this in mind, all right? Gaming has become so huge... And I know people love their franchises um, and hold them very close to their hearts. But honestly, it won't be any different from music, movies, cartoons, and so on. You know, Batman used to do fast food endorsements for movies. So, you know, it's just going to be the same. You know, start expecting weird things like Witcher Old Spice deodorant commercials or God of War ice cream. You know, would you like some ice cream, boy? I mean, honestly, that would be pretty funny, though. This is not Butterbrickle, boy. You know, as advertising goes, uh, honestly, I would totally buy a knife set if it was endorsed by American McGee's Alice. Well, I mean, that type of marketing makes sense. But, you know, come on. Anyway, later everyone. Be well, stay smart. I know it's a little bit more difficult every passing day. But let things shake out, and maybe we can get back to where we should be. You know, I can't imagine GLaDOS really needing insurance, to be honest. You know, I mean, it's not like the test subjects are going to be insurable, you know? The, the, the risk is too high. I don't know, maybe maybe GLaDOS needs one of those warranties. You know, in case of a limb breaks, you know, you can get an upgrade. It's a little overpriced, but, you know, you can do it. Yeah, both of you shut up. People, you don't need the warranty, all right? Just, oh, God. Well, we wouldn't need warranties if we were allowed to fix our own products. Right to repair. Right to repair. Somebody repair my Twinkie. Half of it's gone. Well, that's because you ate it, mate. I was trying to read the future. Oh, my God. <laughs> Now, 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 now
Thank you.